We live on a planet called Earth, which is part of our solar system. But where is our solar system? It's a small part of the Milky Way galaxy. A galaxy is a huge collection of gas, dust, and billions of stars and their solar systems held together by gravity. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, also has a supermassive black hole in the middle. When you look up at stars in the night sky, you're seeing other stars in the Milky Way. If it's really dark, far away from lights from cities and houses, you can even see the dusty bands of the Milky Way stretch across the sky. There are many galaxies besides ours, though. There are so many, we can't even count them all yet. The Hubble Space Telescope looked at a small patch of space for 12 days and found 10,000 galaxies of all sizes, shapes, and colors. Some scientists think there could be as many as 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Some galaxies are spiral-shaped like ours. They have curved arms that make it look like a pinwheel. Other galaxies are smooth and oval-shaped. They're called elliptical galaxies, and some galaxies aren't spirals or ovals. They have irregular shapes and look like blobs. The light that we see from each of these galaxies comes from the stars inside it. Sometimes galaxies get too close and smash into each other. Our Milky Way galaxy will someday bump into Andromeda, our closest galactic neighbor, but don't worry, it won't happen for about five billion years. But even if it happened tomorrow, you might not notice. Galaxies are so big and spread out at the ends that even though galaxies bump into each other, the planets and solar systems often don't get close to colliding. The ancient Greeks called the Milky Way galaxies kuklos, meaning milky circle. They saw a faint band of light in the sky but had no idea it was made of countless stars. Fast forward to Galileo, who with the help of the first telescope, discovered that the Milky Way was made up of numerous stars. For centuries we've known that our solar system resides within the Milky Way, which surrounds us and is visible throughout the year. However, early astronomers were unsure if the Milky Way was a galaxy or just a distribution of stars. In the late 18th century, astronomers William and Caroline Herschel mapped the distances to stars and determined that the Milky Way was a disk-like cloud of stars with the sun near its center. In 1781, Charles Messier catalogued various nebulae, or faint patches of light in the sky, and classified some as spiral nebulae. In the early 20th century, astronomer Harlow Shapley studied globular star clusters and found that the Milky Way center was 28,000 light years from Earth, near the constellations of Sagittarius and Scorpio. Shapley argued that spiral nebulae were separate galaxies, while Heber Curtis believed they were part of the Milky Way. The debate continued for years as astronomers needed larger, more powerful telescopes to resolve the details. In 1924, Edwin Hubble settled the debate using a 100-inch telescope at Mount Wilson in California. He discovered that spiral nebulae contained Cepheid variable stars, similar to those in the Milky Way. These stars change their brightness regularly, and their luminosity is directly related to the period of their brightness cycle. Hubble used the light curves of Cepheid variables to measure their distances from Earth, and found that they were much farther away than the known limits of the Milky Way. Thus, these spiral nebulae were indeed other galaxies outside our own. Astronomers know that galaxies began to form soon after the Big Bang, but they don't yet fully understand the process by which they ended up as we see them today. Here are some of the most promising theories of how galaxies form, how and why they merge, as well as the different varieties of galaxies that have been observed. As the universe expanded in size following the Big Bang, all the matter in it spread more thinly. At the same time, there was a competing effect, the force of gravity, that was pulling this generally diffuse matter into denser clumps. Some of the clumps were just transient affairs that eventually dissipated, but in other cases, the clump's gravity was strong enough to pull in more matter and allow it to grow. As the mass of the clump increased, so did its gravitational pull, causing it to collapse down to a smaller size and higher density. In this way, the first proto-galaxies were able to form within the first few hundred thousand years of the universe's existence. That much is pretty much agreed upon by all astronomers. What is less certain is how those first proto-galaxies relate to the mature galaxies we see today. Essentially, there are two competing theories, 
called top-down and bottom-up. The top-down theory, dating from 1962, came first. According to this, the first clumps to collapse took the form of giant gas clouds, which were comparable in total mass to present-day galaxies. As the gas collapsed and its density increased, some stars formed very early on before the gas had stabilized into a rotating disk. These early stars form the elliptical or bulge-like component of a galaxy, while later stars formed inside the much thinner disk component. The bottom-up theory, also known as the hierarchical clustering model, is more recent and generally considered a better match with current observational evidence. It introduces two new factors that didn't play a major role in the top-down model, dark matter and galactic mergers. We know that dark matter must exist in galaxies because of its effect on their rotation rates, and it seems likely that it played a key part in the original formation of galaxies. But the bottom-up theory, unlike the top-down theory, doesn't assume that the original proto-galaxies must have been the same size as present-day ones. Instead, it takes the view that they were much smaller, and it was only later on that they grew to their present size through repeated mergers. Astronomers are pretty confident that mergers played some kind of role in shaping the galaxies we see today. One reason is that powerful telescopes like Hubble have revealed numerous examples of galactic mergers still occurring today. On top of that, the most distant galaxies, which due to the finite speed at which light travels, are seen as they were billions of years ago, look distinctly smaller and less well-structured than nearby ones. This seems a clear indication that galaxies must have evolved in the time between their original formation and today. As we continue to explore the cosmos and uncover its mysteries, we gain a deeper understanding of our place in the universe. Our journey has only just begun, and there is still much to learn about the formation and evolution of galaxies. So let us keep looking up at the stars and seeking answers to the questions that have captivated us since the dawn of humanity.